If you clicked on this video, you're probably sick of losing and regaining the same 10 pounds over and over again. And it's not just you. Research shows that 80 to 90% of people who lose weight end up regaining it. And you see this everywhere. For women 5'4 or under, traditional dieting just pushes us to extremely low calories. But after losing 30 pounds as a 5'3 girl, I figure out the science-backed way to get lean and stay lean. If you're watching this and you're thinking, I just want someone to tell me exactly what to do. That is exactly what I do in my one-on-one -on -one coaching that is now open for petites looking to get fit. First, I want to clear up. What does petite actually mean and why fat loss is harder for us? All right, so anyone who's 5'4 feet or 162 centimeters or under is considered petite, no matter your current weight. Because we're shorter, our bodies naturally burn fewer calories than someone taller. So when we create a calorie deficit, there's less calories to play with. While someone who's 5'9 can be eating 2000 calories and lose weight, someone who's 5'2 could be eating 500 calories less than that and still be maintaining their weight. That's essentially an entire meal gun, which makes dieting harder to stick to and leaves little room for error, because even a small piece of cake can push us into a surplus. And as our bodies adjust to our current weight through a process called metabolic adaptation, we need to eat less calories to keep losing weight at the same rate. This applies to everyone, not just petites. But the reason why it makes fat loss harder for petites is because we already start at low calories. So we need to keep decreasing our calories lower and lower and we reach that extreme low point a lot quicker than someone taller. That's why a lot of us end up on extremely low calorie diets, which are just impossible to maintain. Yes, they can make you shed pounds in the short term, but they also cause a lot of muscle loss and make regain inevitable. Cutting out your favorite foods can make you lose weight quickly, but it creates intense cravings and food obsession. Avoiding restaurants and social situations might keep you on track, but it also leads to isolation, burnout and resenting the whole process of being healthy and while your body will survive on low calories it won't thrive. Studies show that chronic low calorie dieting can negatively affect women's hormone health which often shows up as low energy, poor recovery, feeling constantly cold or fatigued or even missed or irregular periods. Internally it can also slow your metabolism and negatively affect bone density. All of these factors make fat loss really hard to maintain for petites. That's why I'm going to show you these three strategies that will help you lose weight without going to extremely low calories. The first strategy is dieting slowly, so it barely feels like a diet at all. The general recommendation for weight loss is 1 to 2 pounds per week, but for petites a more realistic and sustainable goal is half to 1 pound per week, because when you're smaller losing one pound represents a much larger percentage of your total body weight than someone taller. So if you weigh 130 pounds and you want to lose 10 pounds, that could realistically take up to four to five months. In my last fat loss phase, I lost 10 pounds in about four months. I went out, actually enjoyed the food I was eating on the daily and never really felt restricted. So when I reached my goal, maintaining was easy because I wasn't hating my diet and just waiting to get back to eating all the food I was craving before. I could actually have them in moderation during my diet. None of that was accidental though. It came down to how I set up my calories from the start. To aim for half to one pound of loss per week, you want to start roughly with 10% deficit from your maintenance. If you don't know your maintenance calories, I'll put an easy method to estimate it on screen. Now, here's the part that most people miss. That 10% deficit doesn't have to come from food alone. You can also create it through movement, like adding a bit of cardio. If your deficit is 1500 calories, a 10% deficit will put you at 1350. But if you add a daily 15 minute inclined walk that roughly burns 100 calories, now you can eat 1450 calories and still be losing weight at the same rate. That extra food makes a big difference because you physically and mentally feel less restricted. The diet doesn't feel so hard after all and all it takes is walking 15 minutes. Now that you know how much to eat, it's also important to know what to eat. Research shows that as calories decrease, protein intake becomes crucial because it helps preserve lean muscle mass. And if you want to keep your metabolism as high as possible, you want to preserve as much lean muscle mass as you can. That's because roughly muscle tissue burns 6 calories at rest, while fat tissue burns 2. So the more muscle you have, the more calories your body burns. Even a small amount of muscle can make a noticeable difference in how much we can be eating. Protein does not only help preserve lean muscle, it also is essential macronutrient in keeping you full, which is important if we want to make our diet feel easy. Research suggests to aim for about 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound. I personally suggest a 1 gram per pound approach because it's simple and it's easy to calculate. If you weigh 130 pounds, you can just aim for 130 grams of protein per day. Okay, now that you have your calories and protein set, you will lose weight, but only if you can stick to it. And that's why we need to talk about strategy number two, 
brain hacking. I know that watching this video you're probably feeling super motivated and just cannot wait to start your diet. But in reality, in a few days that motivation will start to fade. And if you don't have the right strategy in place, that's usually when people start falling off track. So instead of relying on motivation, let's talk about how to hack your brain to make your diet not feel like one. Number one, eat high volume food. Here's how much space 400 calories of oil takes up in your stomach. Now compare that to 400 calories of beef, a little bit more and then compare that to 400 calories of vegetables. Your stomach is completely filled up. Same calories in all three situations, but completely different levels of fullness. Research shows that fullness is driven more by how much calories we eat versus the actual calorie amount. Foods that are high in water and fiber, like vegetables, soups, and water-based fruits, tend to be much lower in calories for the amount of volume they offer. Choosing these over high calorie dense foods make you feel like you're eating more and actually helps you feel fuller a lot quicker. Number two, eat foods you actually like. There's no rule that says you have to eat bland chicken and rice just because you're dieting. And you don't get any extra bonus points for that. Don't force yourself to eat healthy foods you actually hate. You won't make it past day three. Instead, you can do these two things. Portion control the foods you love or make lower calorie versions of your favorite meals. For example, I love Oreo McFlurries, but realistically, I can't have those every day. So instead, I opt for cookies and cream halo top or I make a yogurt bowl. And honestly, most of the times I prefer the swaps because they actually make me feel a lot better after eating them. I'm not having a stomach ache from too much sugar and I can actually have them every day while still meeting my goals. Number three is to add instead of restrict. You know that feeling when you're really craving a chocolate bar, a very specific one, but you tell yourself that you need to eat healthy so you have an apple instead, but then you're still not satisfied so you have a coffee and after the coffee you're still feeling hungry and craving that chocolate bar so you have a protein bar instead. Now you've eaten double the calories of the chocolate bar and it still can't escape your mind so you have a chocolate bar in the end. I've been there. We've all done it. But instead of saying, I can't have that chocolate bar, you can say, what can I add to make this more filling and nutritious? For example, have half the chocolate bar on the side with some yogurt, nuts, or fruits, because now you've satisfied your craving and you've actually made a nutritious meal with protein and fats on the side that will help you feel fuller. Once you understand how to eat so it doesn't even feel like a diet, the last step is making sure that you don't erase your progress once you've reached your goal. Because weight regain after dieting is very common. One of the most well-known examples of this is from a study that followed people on the show The Biggest Loser, a reality TV show where obese individuals lose weight through extremely aggressive dieting and exercise. Participants regained about 70% of the weight they lost, and some ended up gaining even more. And this wasn't because of their lack of discipline. After the show, there was no clear path of what to do next. Most participants just went back to their normal eating, but that's a mistake. To actually sustain your results, you want to have a smart post-diet plan. You might think this is where I'm going to suggest a reverse diet. But instead of dragging out the diet with extremely slow reverse diet, it's important to understand that research actually shows what matters most isn't how slowly you add calories, but having a structured plan to return it to maintenance and not falling back to your old habits. For petites especially, this matters a lot, because we already diet to low calories, so having a slow increases in calories each week will keep you in the deficit. What is the point if you already reached your goal? The smarter approach is to bring your calories back up to maintenance right after finishing the diet. After the diet, you will have a new maintenance. It's around 200 to 600 calories higher than what you were eating in the end of your cut. Since everyone's maintenance will be in a different range of 200 to 600, I recommend increasing calories in two week increments and just watching how your body responds. So here's an example of how to do this. If you've been dieting for 12 weeks and your ending calories are 1300, in the first week you're gonna increase to 1500 calories and watch how your body responds. If you're still losing weight or maintaining, you can increase up to 1700 calories. If your weight stay relatively the same, that's a good estimate of your new maintenance calories. Now, the reason why I want you to get back to maintenance as quickly as possible is because now by increasing your calories slowly from there by about 50 to 100 calories per week is how you can find the top end range of your maintenance. That's how I personally am able to get up to 2300 calories because your maintenance is not an exact number, it's a range. There's lower points and higher points. And as a short girl, it's so worth it to find your highest point. For the longest time, I felt doomed that I had to eat very little and keep constantly counting calories. But following this approach helped me reach my goal and keep my result without feeling stressed over food or being stuck in a diet mindset. I recommend continuing to track calories until you've been at maintenance for about a month or two. Because even if you went at a slow calorie 
calorie deficit and follow the psychology tricks, there will be some diet fatigue. After that, maintenance becomes much more intuitive because you kind of have an idea of what you're eating day to day and how much your body needs. So that's it. If you diet slowly, use brain hacks and have a smart post diet plan, you will not only get lean, but actually stay lean. If this helped you, please like and subscribe because this can help push out this video to more petites that need to hear this. I'll see you in the next one.